Section 15.9, Carnot's principle and the Carnot engine. Before we get into what that is, first need to define what is a reversible process. A reversible process is one in which both the system and the environment around the system can be returned to exactly the states they were in before the process occurred. So note this is a bit different than uh, putting your car in the reverse gear and just driving the opposite direction, right? Because that you're, when you drive your car forward or backwards, you're still dissipating energy in the form of friction, right? So this is a complete undoing. All right, so with that in mind, we can take a look at the Carnot principle. And by the way, it's written Carnot, but it is pronounced Carnot. So now you know, not just the car. All right, so the Carnot principle is an alternative way to state the second law of thermodynamics. And it goes something like this, that no irreversible engine operating between two reservoirs at constant temperatures can have a greater efficiency than a reversible engine operating between those same temperatures. Furthermore, all reversible engines operating between the same temperatures have the same efficiency. What does this mean? Well, first off, the reversible process is gonna give the maximum possible efficiency of a heat engine. Any sort of spontaneous process is irreversible, right? Heat flowing naturally, that's an irreversible process. It's gonna be a lower efficiency. The reversible will give the ideal case, the maximum efficiency. Also, once we know the two temperatures of the hot reservoir and cold reservoir, we will know the efficiency of any such engine if it is a true Carnot engine, if it's a reversible engine. That's pretty nifty because that truly is the maximum efficiency possible for those two temperatures. Let's look closer at what this means in our approach. So this is known as the Carnot engine. It's a reversible engine. And it's really useful as an idealized model. In reality, no engine will ever quite reach the true uh, perfect Carnot engine, but it gives us the limit on the efficiency, which is really important to know. So it says that all of the heat input originates from a single temperature and all of the rejected heat goes into a cold reservoir at a single temperature, right? So instead of just being the hot reservoir up here, it's now hot reservoir at a set temperature TH. And the cold reservoir is now at a set temperature TC, just one temperature. Since the efficiency can only depend for a Carnot engine on the reservoir temperatures, the ratio of the heats can only depend on these temperatures. So for a Carnot engine, for this ideal maximum efficiency uh, engine, so the problem says that it is a Carnot engine, we know that the ratio QC over QH is equal to the ratio of TC over TH. So this is a handy equation that comes into play. And we can use that in our efficiency equation. The first efficiency equation here is for all engines, but this one minus TC over TH, this is the, the maximum efficiency that a heat engine can have. So anytime the problem asks for either a Carnot engine or for a maximum efficiency, the idealized case, you know you can use this equation. One note is that the temperatures here must be in Kelvin. So T in Kelvin. If you do not use them in Kelvin, the ratio there will not come out properly. So we really need to make sure we have the right units there. All right, so let's look at an example of this uh, in actual practice. So example seven, a tropical ocean as a heat engine. So water near the surface of a tropical ocean has a temperature of 298.2 Kelvin, whereas the water 700 meters beneath the surface has a temperature of 280.2 Kelvin. It's been proposed that the warm water be used as the hot reservoir and the cool water as the cold reservoir of a heat engine. Find the maximum possible efficiency for such an engine. This is great. So because we know those two 
uh, temperatures for the hot and the cold reservoir. And because it's asking for the maximum possible efficiency, that clues us in, we can use that Carnot efficiency equation. That the efficiency is equal to one minus Tc divided by Th. As long as those temperatures are in Kelvin, which they even gave us the temperatures in Kelvin. That's great. All right, so let's check out the calculation. So Carnot efficiency, one minus Tc over Th, plug in those numbers in and it comes out to 0 0.06036, or in other words, about 6.0%, right? We could, in this case, we do actually have four decimal places. So it is okay to have it as 6.036%. Notice 6% is not all that efficient, right? Uh, when, when you put in something, you usually expect to get more than 6% out as a result. But the advantage here is that the energy is already there. So this is something that's not just being discussed. It's actually, they're built currently around the world. So here's a map of some, this is known as OTEC. Uh, ocean thermal energy conversion, I believe. And so operational are in red. So there's a couple here, uh, some in Japan, Korea, um, and there's one in Hawaii, right? And that's the one pictured here. Uh, there's even a much bigger one proposed in Hawaii to come. So we'll see, right? But notice all of the places where they're built or proposed is where the water is tropical. Right, because you really need that extreme difference in temperature. The larger the difference in temperature, the more energy you can get out. So that's why they use the surface water where it's pretty warm, and then the deep water where it's cold. Let's take a closer look at the setup. This is just really cool. So the cold water intake that they said goes deep, right here they're getting water that's five degrees Celsius. That's pretty close to 280, right? Um, 41 degrees Fahrenheit very cold, right? Just above freezing. Versus the warm water side, that's at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's why people are going to Hawaii, because that's wonderful water to swim in. So what do we do? Well, the cold water is sent around one end of the tube to cool at that part of the tube where there's a working fluid that passes through, uh, and it becomes liquid after passing through this cool condenser, right? So then the liquid comes over here to the warm side and it gets warmed up and turned into a vapor. The vapor then can come around and spin a turbine. Once you get a turbine spinning, that generates electricity, which you will see if you take Physics 2B next semester. So something spinning is a, through a generator becomes electricity. So you can get electricity out just by having a temperature difference. So this is a really cool example of an actual heat engine, and you can calculate the maximum efficiency for any given two temperatures using our Carnot efficiency. All right, one more thing, conceptual example. The natural limits on the efficiency of a heat engine. Consider a hypothetical engine that receives 1,000 joules of heat as input from a hot reservoir and delivers 1,000 joules of work, rejecting no heat to a cold reservoir whose temperature is above zero Kelvin. Decide whether this engine violates the first or second law of thermodynamics. So I'd like you to think about this, come up with an answer and an explanation before you move on. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, hoping you did that. Well, let's take a look. First, what is the first law? Well, the first law says that energy can't be created or just destroyed, right? Basically that energy is gonna be conserved. And in this case, energy is conserved. We have a thousand joules going in, a thousand joules coming out. So we're following the first law, okay. What about the second law? Well, the second law, we know from the Carnot statement of the second law that there is a maximum efficiency that's equal to this one minus Tc over Th. Now, if we have zero heat going to the cold reservoir, if all of our input heat is becoming work, then 
this is a suggestion that our efficiency is 100%, right? It's a perfect conversion. But looking at this equation, the only way to get 100% is if this second term is 0, right? We have 1 minus something. As soon as we have a non-zero second term, we're going to have an efficiency lower than zero. And as soon as this temperature to the cold of the cold reservoir is above zero Kelvin, this is going to be non-zero. And so our efficiency is going to have to be less than 100% every time. So this is a natural issue or factor with heat engines that thermal pollution is inherent to the heat engine. They will always have to reject heat. All right, so that introduces the idea of the heat engine and as well as the Carnot principle. Now, next up, we're going to get to take a look. Why can't we cool the house by just opening the fridge? It's gonna be good, so hope you will join. <laughs>